Greetings! Hello! We're back! Welcome! Did we go somewhere? Well, we weren't here Thursday. Okay. Slacker. I'm just kidding. Welcome to Family Showdown Live and Crazy. What are we doing tonight? I don't know! Only one person here knows. Hopefully it's him. The cat? Possibly the cat. <laughs> he spies on everybody. Alright, let me do some housekeeping. Alright, here we go. Alright, let's do this. So, we did something this weekend. We did? Look at the... <laughs> we went to BGG Spring! Oh yeah, that! Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. BGG Spring! It was awesome, awesome, awesome! This may have been the best BGG Spring we've ever had. It's pretty awesome. For me, anyway. The girls loved it. <laughs> I had an awesome time. So. It's pretty amazing. What's up? So you want to talk about do it? Do you have anything to say? No, not at all. I am just I don't know where to start, actually. Well, that's why I made a list right here. <laughs> amazing. All right, welcome to those that have joined. Um, join, join, join. Let's start off with the, the highlight of the con. The meetup. Woo-woo! Okay. <laughs> That was so much fun. We are so doing that again. Oh my goodness. If at th if nothing else, it was the best excuse to get an awesome group of people together and play silly games. That is true. I mean, that's an extreme way to do it, but I think that was the best darn thing. <laughs> oh man. Everybody that came in was just amazing. It was so much fun to just hang out and meet people face to face, get to chat with people and connect to play games it's just and it was interesting to see how many um people we know online that's in the chat that's like semi-local and stuff too that's pretty cool right. so very exciting yeah it was nice a lot of people came and we met people like continually throughout the con it was it was that kind of was interesting. really it was really fun and we did not realize boy apparently two in particular Nessa should get some kind of like royalties for Gonuts for Donuts. <laughs> because we've had so many people come up and be like, that's because of this. So, oh, it's doing things. Um, I think that's just Oh, us. is that just us? Yeah, I hope it's just okay. us. Okay. Yell at us in the chat if something's frozen. Because our screen looks frozen, but our system is running. So, yeah, that, that's I'm, fun. It's just our computer. Anyway, so yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. It was funny. The Rebecca didn't show up until that evening. And no less than, like, five people came by and said, Hi, and where's Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The girls thought it was interesting. That was and funny. weird that people were coming up coming and Coming up and hi. saying hi to them? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, and the, um, um, yeah, I, I had to finish up school stuff because we had in-service and stuff on Friday. And... So I met them later, and the but I thought we were talking about the meetup. You're killing me. Are we doing the timeline now? I'm, I, I'm sorry, like, I, I went off on a. Little... I know you went off on. A but anyways, yes. the, the meetup the meetup was awesome. <laughs> the uh, it was cool. The crappy door prizes went over well. <laughs> no, they were not Cheetos. I saw someone in the chat. Those just happened to be some of the refurbishments someone purchased for the... Hey, they're my game. If I want to serve Cheetos at my game meetup, I can serve Cheetos at my game meetup. That's true. That's true. It's it didn't funny. slow anyone down from eating those Cheetos, did it? Mostly Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was pretty fun. It was... Um... So what do we do? We play... Oh my gosh, we sat around and chatted for a while because it was fun to hear like what everybody does, what they like to play, and where they live, and all that kind right. of stuff. And then... Um... Yeah, we, we played um, Codenames Disney. Codenames Disney together, and then we did some Where Words. Both of those were really times stinking up. funny. And we did Time's Up, and that was a riot. I love every time I play that game, I just love it more. I don't know. There's something pretty amazing with that. <sighs> love right, that so, game. So move your head like a little bit to your left, like you're peeking around a, a door. You ready? You ready? I guess. What am I doing? All right, hold on. Uh, oh. <laughs> There's a picture of the meetup. Yay! <laughs> so now you can see uh, everybody. Uh, we're not sure what Nessa's doing in that picture because she was doing weird poses, but that's how she rolls. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's a, I think, yeah, you can actually see everybody's head. That's pretty awesome. Very awesome group. Very cool. You guys rock. It was amazing. It was so much fun. Um, 
Rarely. Uh, that's like, for me, that's a top tenner. Like, I had so much fun doing the, playing games with everybody there. Yeah, and honestly, that was I, I, I should I should have scheduled it for longer. I thought we'd be bored after two hours, but... Dude, well, the only other thing, the only thing that interferes is there was other stuff going on at the con that was going on. So we, I don't know right. if we could do it for longer, but oh my goodness. An excuse to have that room to play group games, that would be, that would be fun. Yeah, it was I'm really cool. That. It was really uh, uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. I, th- I think I think uh, I think a lot of people were uh, par- partially it was probably they were preoccupied with other things or they forgot. But I think some people were just shy to come to the meetup. Do not <laughs> next year. Do don't not be, don't be shy. Don't come be shy. to the meetup. There were a couple yeah, of people yeah. that walked by the door. I almost jumped out in the hall, but I thought I probably they walked by start. and w- look in and they saw a lot of people and they just kind of wandered off. No, no, it's like <laughs> oh no, you don't just jump out and scare them. Come in, play games. So yeah, we had we had a, a great time. It was it was it was it was really fun. Like mm-hmm. I said, I wish it would have would we would have had more time to do it next year. We may plan longer so we can actually play more games. It was really- yeah, because we could break up into groups and do stuff and like play uh, compatibility or stuff that okay, takes smaller yeah. counts too and yeah. crazy things. That'd be fun. I just don't know if, it, if we grow much bigger. A boardroom may not do it. I don't know what we're gonna do. When we outgrow a boardroom. We'll take over the way kick off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. What, what are they gonna I do? don't know what we would do. Anyway, I don't know. We'll have our own con. That'll, that'll be a, that'll be a worry for another day. <laughs> Not a worry. That's a if that's the kind of worries we're having, then gosh darn it, we're doing all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was it was a blast. So I, was, I, I thought it was gonna be me, Nessa, and Katie and Rebecca staring at each other, but it turned out okay. <laughs> no, no, it was fun. All right, so we're gonna switch gears to new games. I played eighteen new games. Holy. Catfish. Okay. Eighteen. Well, I know you beat me. I didn't even see how many of these are new to me. I played eighteen new games at the con. So we're gonna go over these quickly, um, but at the end of this, we're gonna go over the spiel des Jarez. <laughs> what? Spell de Jarez nominations. I, I played I all games. nine, for better or worse. I played all nine of them at the you BG did, Springs. You did, and, and I will give you my my opinion. <laughs> my oh, uh, yeah, and I have an opinion. <laughs> Wait, just uh, she has an, she has a strong opinion about a particular game. <laughs> but we're gonna go with other games first. So here's some games we so played. So no fun. Okay. So I, we played a handful of kid games. Yes, so, we did. Um, Several I'm go, times. I'm gonna go with these quickly, but I will t- talk about each a little bit. We played, uh, me, Katie, and Nessa played Jack and the Beanstalk. I wanted to play that, gosh Which is one of the Tales and Game series. Oh, no wonder you guys loved it, because the Tales and Game series, awesome. So, I really enjoyed it. It's a stacking game. So basically, That's right up your alley. Basically, you roll some dice, (laughs) and then you take some actions with those dice, but then you have to stack the dice and make the Beanstalk bigger, taller and taller and taller, right? And eventually the beanstalk falls over, and people get some treasures, and you keep going. It's, it's not like you the tower falls over, you lose. It's just, just kind of a little bit of a... Everyone else gets kind of a bonus if you knock the tower over. Yeah. Um, and if you complete the tower, you get to put a little castle on top, and you get some bonus points. It was really, it was really, really good. It's probably, of all of, the, all of them, it's probably right behind uh, Tortoise and the Hare for my favorite. Wow, really? Even better than, like, the Pied Piper or whatever? Oh, yeah. Those? Yep, yep, yep. Wow. I like that one. It was fun. Now I really want to play that one, because... Hmm. Then I played a game called Kobold. So it's a... a uh, this is a l- little kid's game. I'd probably say it's Nessa's Age type game. And, uh, okay. It's basically, there's all, there's your, they say it's a children's bedroom and your little kobold sneaking in, stealing her toys. <laughs> so, but, but the, but the little kid has a flashlight that can shine around the room. Nice. And, and if it spots you, you get, you get, run, you just run away. You're scared <laughs> to run away. So you put, it's basically worker placement. You put your workers on various parts on the board to okay. collect different tiles. Okay. And you can either put a worker or you can take all your workers and run away with toys. And... Um, this is greatness. You can, it's kind of a set collection. You collect different sets of toys. You get points and things like that. Okay. But the the, the, the flashlight's kind of photosynthesis-esque. It's a, there's a little arc that moves around that points in different directions. And if, oh. it, and if it points at your area, then all your workers in your area you have, have to, to like scatter. Have to leave the board. So it, it was really cool. <laughs> I thought it was fun. The girls didn't like it. I think I liked it more than they did. <laughs> yeah, because they were like, eh, because they didn't even talk about it after that. So apparently they didn't enjoy it. 
Yeah, so that, that, yeah. I, like, I like that one. Cool. Let's see, what are the kids' games besides the Spiel games did I play? I played... Uh, yeah, you played a bunch of them. Memoir! Right? Oh, yes. No, it's <laughs> Memoir! 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 Yeah, I know because I played that with them, too. They... So talk about... It. Oh, my goodness. That game is probably one of their new favorites right now. And I thought, oh, no, a memory game. Ugh, I'm going to be bored out of my skull. It's actually a really cute memory game. It's, um, you've got, like, crabs and penguins and walruses and stuff. And, yes, it is a memory game, but as people get out, it's kind of a last man standing for the prizes. You get jewels and stuff off the volcano. But you can also, you can play it as a straight memory game. You can play it like the base game, like I was saying. And then you can also play it where each of the little animals have an ability. So the cards are neat. They're, they're... They've got two aspects to them. You've got the animal and then the background. So they might have pink flowers in the background or green grass or sandy beach or uh, lava, I think, is the other one. And with the animals, with their superpowers, each one does something like the walrus. You can tell the next player, you pick one tile and you say, you can't flip that one. Or like the crab, you get to go two turns. You get to do another one, you flip over. Um, I think the penguin was you got to peek at one, but you didn't have to tell anyone about it. And, uh, oh, the octopus was my favorite because you moved it and you moved it one direction and then switched tiles around. So you really messed with people. A lot of fun. The girls really got into it and loved it. And of course we ended up buying it and they still were playing it. So. Yeah, we played. That's probably the most played game that we had was, at the convention. Well, minus way kick. Way kick always well, way wins. Kick wins everything. Way kick wins the universe. But second place, a distant second, is Memoir! So, all right. It's very fun. Very fun game. It's very cute. And, um, like I was talking with the Stronghold guy that was demoing the game with us, it's really neat because you could get it for a little kid and just play it as a little memory game. And right. as they get older, you can actually kind of soup up the game and play it as the regular game and then play it with the character abilities. So, it's a long lasting game. I really like that. Yeah, we didn't play the base game. I guess you, when you flip the cards over, they stay flipped or something? What's the base game like? No, the base game just doesn't use the superpowers. Oh, but you have character powers? I didn't even see those. You know oh, yeah. So I played the souped up game. You played the base game, apparently. Oh, yeah. I never yeah. played the good one. Oh, yeah. It's hysterical. But it was good. It was, it yeah. was, okay. It was okay little game. It's a cute little game. All right. Uh, next on the list of new games to us, it's not a new game, but Potion Explosion. I want that game. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that game was adorable. It's really cute. It's and it's another one of those tactile. I don't know. It's just fun to fiddle around with all the pieces. And I don't know. We always like to play Bejeweled and all those other games that have the you know stuff and actually do it physically instead of just clicking on a clicky game or a digital screen. I enjoyed that. To me, that was like right up my alley. I like the little puzzly aspect to the game. Yeah, I like that game. The the. The library copy was a little beat up and crooked and, and wasn't work, working yep. quite well. And the table was <laughs> tilted, so it was, it was... It was a special game. It was a special <laughs> game, but I enjoyed it. It, it, was, was, fun. it, it was, was fun. Really and, uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. That's one of those I wouldn't mind. Because that's one of those you could get people to play. Another one of those great, like, intro to board gaming kind of games. Because pe everybody knows about Bejeweled and Candy Crush and all that stuff. And you could say, this is just a... 3D version of that, you know, a real you, version. And you could even, you could even, I was just thinking that you mentioned that, making it a gateway game, you could even take some of the rules away if you needed to. Oh yeah, you could you simplify could, could that make game. The, make easily. it where you don't even drink the potions and you just get one yeah. point per potion. You could, oh yeah, I I like that. And it's another one of those games that's like, oh, this would be a great one to travel and be like, hey, you want to play a game? I bet you've never, you know, never seen this one. Kind of fun. All right, let's do so. another one that you can talk about. Pictomania. Oh my goodness, I want this game. <laughs> this game is coming out in what, September? It's already out. Okay. The, out, the game that's currently out is kind of a more extensive um, big box version of the game. And they're coming out with, okay. um, I guess it's Czech Games. Is Czech Games? Who, has, who owns that? CG, yes. Yeah, Czech Games is coming. Uh, they basically got the rights to the game, full rights to the game back. And they're going to make a um, smaller version with a smaller price point. Yeah, it's going to be a Target exclusive when we said, but the price point's 20 bucks, And I'm super excited about that because it's going to be really easily accessible that way. I know you have to go to Target for it, but eh, whatever. Um, and 
Oh, I just, I love the way it plays because I've always liked um, Pictionary and stuff, but this one makes it much more interactive because not only are you drawing a picture really fast, um, you have a whole set of categories of three different lists of things that you could be drawing and then you draw cards that's like one, it's kind of like bingo, you're going to get like C3 or something like that and you look and that's what you're going to draw. You draw it really fast and then you spend the rest of your time, you have cards and you're going to vote what you think which list is what they drew and you get points for how many people get yours right and how many you guess. And if you guess first, you get more points than the person that guessed after you and stuff like that. And I just like that that's, it's kind of like competitive, but it's also sort of cooperative because you want everyone to succeed. You just want to succeed at it better. So I guess I'm <laughs> and thinking... And so it's, I don't know. I'm thinking, maybe I'm thinking of a different game. I thought it was the one where you wanted some people to get it right, but some people not to get it no, right. No, you want... Okay, maybe I'm thinking of a different game. No, because you, if you don't have... If they have bonus stars that you hand out for people to vote for it, your which picture you did, and you want to give out all of those because they become negative points for you. So if people can't tell what you drew... That's bad for you. Oh, okay. So it's really... Well, you're thinking I a different really, game. You are thinking a different game, because that, that's more like... Um, um, Dixit. Dixit, yeah. yeah. Um, but this... Oh, gosh. I love it. I I'm think sure it's what fun. game I'm thinking of. But anyway. I don't know. I, I didn't get to play. The, they, they demoed it, yeah. and I was off doing something else. I don't know what I was doing. But I was doing something else. Yeah. All right. Let's see. A lot let's of Let's do one of mine. Flip City. It was like two in the morning... I can only imagine. Did you actually flip things? No, it's not. It's because I would have been confused. You upgraded right the end. cards and flipped them. So it's two in the morning. Okay. Me and Tommy are wandering around the con. They're like, I'm like, my eyes are like glazed over. They're like, what do you want to do? And he pulled out Flip City, and I was like, out of it. <laughs> but I won. So what does that say about Tommy? <laughs> wow. It was, it, was, it was an okay little card game. It reminded me of Marchi Coral without dice, for whatever reason. Maybe there's no relation, but that's what it reminded me of. It, uh, in a good way? No. Well, I, th I think you actually might like the game. I was like, meh. I'm not sure how to think about this Flip now. City. It was eh, but you might like it. The, 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 <laughs> game, the game to me seemed very limiting. Oh, really? It didn't seem like there was a, there was much choice. There's only a couple ways. It seemed like there's only a couple ways you can win, and there wasn't a lot of different cards, and I don't know. Hmm, I want to try it. I give it a meh. Yeah. I, <laughs> I give it a man. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Uh, let's do uh, Ticket to Ride New York. Oh, another cool game. This is another one that is... Oh, wait, is this the one that's Target exclusive? Am I getting the backwards? They're both Target games. Are I they think. both going to be Target games? Uh, well, I thought the one's Kickstarter, isn't it? Or is it... No, neither one of them are Oh, maybe they're both Targets. Okay, I don't remember. I might be getting the... The, the, the New York is definitely Target. I don't know okay. about Pictomania. I can't I remember there. now about Pictomania. Dang it. I might be getting Pictomania wrong, so don't don't yell at me. But I know, yeah, the Target, the Ticket to Ride one is Target exclusive, and it also has a low price point, which is really exciting. So I think it's also twenty bucks, and uh, it's just a little miniature Ticket to Ride. It really is like a fifteen minute game. Nessa and I sat down and played a quick game, and it's really cute. That it's instead of trains, it's taxis, and you're doing taxi routes, and it's simplified routes. Um, but you still have the same pressure to get your routes done. Some of them are still long. You still have some because it's a little bit of a more rectangular shaped map. So you can get some short ones, but there's some long ones that go from the north to the south too that you're going to have to fight with. And you still have the same, it's the exact same kind of rules set up where you've got the, how you ca draw cards into your hand and how you lay out routes. Um... It's basically it's basically ticket to ride, yeah. But it's just a quick version of it, and I think it's gonna have. I think it's gonna be a pretty big success because it's quicker. It's you can teach that to people and still have time to play it several times if you want. Yeah. And then if they like that, you're like, there's a bigger version of this that yeah. takes a little bit longer. And then you can introduce the world. Oh, all of the ticket to ride maps. <laughs> yeah, I, I, di I didn't. I didn't. I didn't play, but I kind of watched it play. Watched it play. <laughs> Trademark. Um, <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> to me, it seemed like you start out with less trains. They're actually cabs in this case. You start out with less yeah, cabs. Yeah, there's um, less of those. You don't have like the longest road thing nope. or thing like that. Yeah, you don't worry about so that. So it's just, it's just tickets. Um, the tickets are a lot shorter, mm -hmm. a lot quicker to do. 
Um, yeah, the map is much smaller. It, and the map's smaller. It just seems like, yeah, but, it just it take, you take Ticket to Ride and kind of condense it into a smaller map. Yeah. Less turns, less rules. It seemed really good. It seems like a really, it, it made Ticket to Ride even more of a gateway game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a, um, it's not a kids game, but mm-hmm. it's, I think it's easier to introduce it to kids because it is a shorter yeah, I mean the, the 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 concentration or whatever. Yeah, so I mean it's still it's still ticket to ride. Wait, it's still ticket to ride, but I think it'd be easier to teach all ages. So, all right, like it, like it, like it. So let's now move on to one of the hits of the con, stuff fables. Oh my goodness, the <laughs> girls are wanting to buy that one. I think that's going to be a purchase. So I played that. I played it with the girls. Um, that was like the second game we played at the con, and they loved it. They did. They wanted to keep going. This is like, are we going to do the whole book? <laughs> the book is like this thick. <laughs> they like, probably I, would. I'm like, I don't think we'll be able to do the whole book, but we did three of the scenarios, I think. We got all the way to the train. We went past you. You guys went past the train? <laughs> the girls taught the game, um, and everybody was having a good time, and so they just kept going, and we played, and we played, and we played. We didn't end up, you guys, like, had to do an extra thing after the train. Yeah, we didn't actually get on the train. The train got away. Okay, we got on the train. We had to ride a wagon. Yeah, okay. Well, it. we got on and we got to go to the next so adventure. You skipped, so we went. We skipped a scenario. Yeah, we did. but we went one farther. So, mm. yeah, we don't want to say too much about it. But the premise is really adorable. Um, your little stuffed animals for a little girl. Um, and protecting her at nighttime from any bad dreams and stuff. And of course, the for little kids, the the premise might be just feel real enough to be a little bit spooky, um, or if you have really sensitive kids, so that might be something to think about. You might want to kind of research it before you get something yeah, like that. Little monsters are kind of creepy. Yeah, they are a little creepy looking, um, but it's really cute. And the stuffed animals are very brave, and they they go and fight. And the mechanic um, combat mechanisms are great. I think it's pretty simple. To figure out, I think it's easier than Mice and Mystics. I think oh, yeah. it's less punishing than Mice and Mystics because yep. if you screw something up, it is not a complete reset, go over, repeat, repeat. You know that turned into it just a, makes you make sure you have to do extra round uh, scenarios or makes the next scenario harder, th- that sort of thing. Yeah, but you get to keep going forward. You get to keep doing things with it. You get cool items along the way. You get to try to search the room and do stuff. It's a very dungeon crawly, but with this cute theme mm-hmm. really cute theme and the girls are already completely hooked and uh yeah i enjoyed it quite a bit yeah and i'm sure we didn't get every single rule right because we kind of rushed through it but yeah it's it's very it's very uh um, but it's forgiving in that too yeah. i don't think the nice thing is it's very family friendly oh, so yeah. you could fix or break things and not break the game yeah which i like about this, that yeah this game that game's a mice and mystics killer to me i wouldn't totally. i would never play mice and mystics over that game nope but that's just me. That's my opinion. All right. There you go. So now we're <laughs> on to the big ones I played. We'll save the one that you got to play for last. So I guess this is a big one, but I didn't think it was a big one I sat, when I sat down to play it. But Bunny Kingdom. I got to play Bunny Kingdom. <laughs> the game is so adorable. And I thought it was going to be a goofy little, oh, you put bunnies on the board. Ooh, ooh, kind of, but it's actually a, a fairly thinky game. It's, that's awesome. It, 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 I was I was surprised that I don't know if heavy's the right word, but it was much more robust than I thought it was going to be. Um, so, Bunny Kingdom, if you haven't played, it's a drafting game where you draft cards, and the premise is you're putting bunny your bunnies on various spaces on the board, and it's kind of a grid pattern. You have like it kind of reminds me of a choir. It has like you know A B C D and one two three, mm-hmm. and you, you you basically you play a card and it tells you to put a bunny on that spot on the board. And so it's area control, but then there's some thought to it. Um, there's kind of a King Domino-esque scoring. Basically, you take any bunnies that are adjacent to each other forms a thief. Thief? Fife? 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 A thief? A thief? But anyway, and you basically count how many different types of resources are in that area times the number of spires on your little castles in the area, and that's how many points you get. Oh, so cool. not only do you want to get lots of bunnies in an area but that may be helpful but mainly it's how many different resources you get and then you can there's cards that let you put castles on certain spots on the board and you can put cat you build castles and you build out uh, a kingdom and you get points that way and you can do multiples and there's other ways of scoring there's some cards you draft that just give you points at the end and things like that so it was really um 
if you were walking by and looking at the game, you would you wouldn't think it's a a kind of a a midweight Euroy drafting game. That is so interesting, <laughs> and I just I absolutely love the little minis for that. I think that's so stinking cute. So that's yeah. awesome. So yeah, ah, it, that sells it, me. It's man. definitely not a kids. I don't think it's a kids game. There's I think there's too much going on for it to be a kids game. But they make it look like a kids game, which is what's funny. Well, every once in a while, you need some bunnies. Everybody needs bunnies. So. I actually enjoyed it. I got destroyed because I didn't really understand how important certain aspects of the game were until about halfway through, and then by then I was... Overrun I, by bunnies? I was overrun by bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best Cause thing Because I, I was like I'm trying to build a, a, a big thing with lots of bunnies, but that's not necessarily the way to go because if you got empty spaces without resources, they're not doing you any good. So. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, so that. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right. All right. So that was one. Onward to the next. Oh, man. Kabuki Kid, she will be proud. I finally played Star Wars Rebellion. <laughs> Let me say, it's... Hype, 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 hype. It, it, it meets the hype. It okay. Was, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was Excellent. awesome. Um, it's, it's my kind of game. I like it. I like the I like the, the way, way the game plays out. I love how you select missions and you assign people to missions. I like how epic the scope is. I, the the cool. best part of the game is the whole tension about where the, the rebel base is, and trying to figure that out. I I think. So what you play the the? I played the empire. Imper- okay. But I think I enjoy the the role play if that's the right word of the empire. But I think I would enjoy the mechanism of hiding. Oh yeah, yeah. That more well so like than I would the other side. I think I'd like being the rebels more because I like the whole hide and seek thing where you, where you where you know where I I know where where I am but you don't and yeah you know, I feel feel all like aha I got him going off the wrong way or yeah whatever. yeah 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 it just it was just a really awesome game I want to play again as cool. the as the as the other team other side so very cool it was it was cool I, I really I really think that the game is really um very asymmetrical the the empire is it reminds me a little of a war of the ring in a way the empire has all these forces and just Big giant ships and Death Stars, and you're blowing up planets, and you're just trouncing everything. Nice. And the rebels are more about subterfuge and being sneaky and and sabotaging the production and, and moving around and being covert. So it's completely you're playing two completely different. That games. is very interesting. So, but does it have animals? This is the stuff I know you guys are wanting to know. Does it have animals? Did does Yoda count? <laughs> <laughs> sure why not i don't know if it has animals oh very, I may, you I might may, not, I may have to, it may to, not make it I, any top I may have to, I may have to, size, I may, I may have to lower my bgg rating by half a point because it doesn't have animals <laughs> but i enjoyed it quite a bit okay but i didn't enjoy it quite as much as as i did 1846 oh i forgot about that you played that I, yeah Finally played an 18xx game, and I am a convert. Uh oh, nice that, knowing you. That those that game was epic. It is like epic, epic, epic. And from what I hear from Mr. Tommy, is that <laughs> it's not even the one I would like the most out of the game. Oh really? Oh This, this one I played 1846. This one um, really focuses in on the track route building and developing routes and tr- trains and I mean they all have that but that's the main focus and the stock market to me seemed like almost an afterthought to the game and I wouldn't say it's an afterthought but it's a it definitely decide helped decide who, who won but um, the track the routes was what won the game and, interesting and okay there's other games that where the stock market is more of a focus and it has all kinds of 2D weird stock market movement stuff going on. And Nothing like some weird stock market movement to get me all excited <laughs> about board games. But, yeah, it was... Let's see, we started at... When did we start? <laughs> you guys... We start- started at 6. 6 and got the home. The teach lasted till after 7, and we finished at about 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> so it was... How many is that? One, 6 to 1.30? So 7 and a half with the teach. Dude, that's that's... Ti four though that's, <sighs> I, I really I really enjoyed it. Oh man, it was awesome. It beats TI, awesome. Does it beat Ti four? Does it beat Ti four? No, it does not. Okay, see, I'm just does not beat Ti four. But it's a different it's a different completely different 
mindset, right? I mean, it's it's this one's all about mathing things out and, and organizing and planning ahead and and really just really long combining short term strategy with long term strategy. There's even a little bit of negotiation and kind of steering people oh certain goodness. ways. And so, I mean, it's not true negotiation, like I'll trade you this for this, but it's like, okay, if you build this track here, then I'll build this track over here, right? And try to work together to, to combo right. off of each other and stuff. Right. So sure it was awesome. It was together. epic. I want to play another one right now. <laughs> <laughs> not right now. But, that know. would be interesting. I'm just, you're rolling into work. Oh, I'm coming to work at, yeah, like a zombie. I won't even sleep tonight. <laughs> so that was awesome, awesome, awesome. So we have one last game before we go into the spiel nominees. Go into our spiel about the spiel. And this was actually a post-con game, but we'll count it. Cause it oh, it totally counts. It was, same it was on the day. same day. So talk talk, talk about it. Since Nusfjord! Besides being the coolest name, um, it's about fish. What else do you need? No, it's also Uwe Rosenberg. Again, Animal. there are animals because there's fish. <laughs> That's your list, not mine. Uve's done it again, guys. Oh my goody goodness. This one is much quicker than his other games. Um, oh, I don't, I don't even know where to start with this. But it's got this great... It, you're a fishing community and you need to build up your land or forest it and do lots of different things with fish. I, <laughs> I'm horrible at describing the mechanisms after one play, typically, but... Um, I will say this, it was very smooth, it's very quick and easy to teach, there's not, it's not like Feast for Odin where you have to learn about 80 different pieces, you've got fish, you've got wood, wood trees, whatever, and gold. and gold, that's it, that's it, the only specialty things are the buildings and you can literally read those and do what they say, it's all straightforward, the elders, are the special people that you can have, they have very simple Straightforward abilities on the card. You don't have to... I mean, Hunter didn't even teach those to me. He's like, you can read those as you go. And that was so much simpler. But it still has the famous, like, Rosenberg start out with literally nothing and ramp up <laughs> to where you're doing more and more and more stuff. It's much quicker. We got what? With a teach, it was what, an hour? An hour an with hour a for, teach. With a teach for it's, both of us. It's like 20 minutes per player, and that's pretty accurate. It was... Great. So it goes really fast. Setup, of course, is way easier than something like Feast for Odin or Caverna and all those pieces and stuff. Because all you have, again, we just made a pile. We didn't even separate our fish and our sticks. <laughs> so, okay, they were just in a pile over there. They're cute little wooden pieces, of course, by the way. Um, I just, I really liked it. It's still got his his economy and it's still got the, the, the same flavor as those games, but in a much condensed version. Oh, yeah. And it's it's simpler. I think this would be a good gateway Uve game. Yeah, this is the that's, like, what I, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I say if 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 I was gonna teach someone one of his games now, that's the one I'd pull off the shelf. Yeah, that 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 would be the first one I would use to teach. And it's probably I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna have to think about it. But it may be my my new favorite of his. I I still like Lahav more. I think. Yeah, you've always had a soft spot for Lahav, but oh, man, this I don't know. This one's really good. It's really good, guys. If you get a chance, Nusfjord, and it's yep. fun to say. I highly <laughs> recommend it. And if you haven't tried a Rosenberg game, this is the one I would oh, say. Oh, it's a great one to start with. Get. Great yep, one to start with. The, I would before I would say it'd be something like Caverna or something, but um, this is the one. No doubt, this is the one you should start with. Yeah, hands down. All right, the moment you've been waiting for. Only took you a half an hour to get to it. We are to the Spiel de Yares games. <laughs> all right, so, all right. America. All right. Oh, what? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh, you want my Spiel about the Spiel game? No, I want to hear your. No, I want to hear you say Spiel de, de... Spiel de Yares. Yeah. Was that <laughs> anticlimactic for you? All right. So I played all nine. I've never know if done I got that, it right. and I went back and looked, and I've never played every Spiel nominee for if any year. It's the first time I've done it, and I did them all within probably 12 hours? almost 24 hours of, each, of, of, of it. Well, now, it would have been all the same day, but Tommy wouldn't play the mind with me. <laughs> Another story. All right, I got visual. I got visual aids here. Oh, you do. Yeah, Excellent. here we go. We're gonna okay. we're gonna start off with the kids games, and you can talk about those. Cause okay. You yes, all I those. played all the kids games. So the first one here on the list we have is Emojito or Emojito. Not sure. I'm assuming it goes with emoji. So Emojito. 
Um, this game was kind of a meh by the girls. Um, I think Katie... No, it was, it was a hate by Nessa. Well, Nessa hated it. Yeah, Katie enjoyed it, but mildly. Um, you have cards, and you draw one. You just draw one card, and it's got a little character with a facial expression on it. And you, depending on where you are on the board, you can either... You're going to make a sound, no speaking, just a sound... Or you're going to make a face, or you get, have one where you can do both. And that's all you do. You give a quick little sound or make a face, and everyone at the table, then you're going to draw a bunch of cards, lay them out with your card on the table, and everyone's got to guess which one it is. It's like a facial expression apples to apples. Or Dixit. Or Dixit, yeah, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, so, and then the, the animals on that board are actually some of the faces. Yeah, some of the faces that are on the screen you can see. Then. So like for the duck, if you did the face, you just go... Yeah, and and, and, that's, and, and that's, if you draw, sometimes you'll draw cards that look completely different than that one, so it's blatantly obvious. Or the next time, there were a couple rounds where we had, I, I swear they had the exactly same, same stupid little smirky smile on them. Or like like, the, oh, like a, an example on the, I'm pointing to the screen, but in the, <laughs> right there, in the example, it. if you look at the snake and the duck, they're making pretty much the same face, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Nessa hated it because I, I think it, once you reach an age going downward... There's going to be a point where they don't recognize facial expressions as well as other yeah, kids, they, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And she had a real difficulty t- translating our face to what the face to, the animal yeah. was making. Yeah. Um, even when it was obvious, she had difficulty Yeah, Yeah, she doing didn't, it. You know, that, um, that may not be much of her shtick, too. But, uh, but it's, it's okay. I think it would be hilarious for 8, 9, 10-year-old kids I'll say, to play a together. A group of kids, probably a hit. Any adults? Yeah. Kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> Gunner and I were like, next. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, um, the next one, I'm going to remember the name. It's right here. Funkle Shots. Yeah, we, I, I got the Americanized Yes, version. you did. It's, it's, <laughs> but we had the German game, and for the life of me, I could not, I got to where I could even spell Funkle Shots, man. There is hope. There is hope. <laughs> I may learn German yet. So, but it's Dragon's Breath, and that was by far... That was the my favorite. Favorite. All I would the way actually play that board. game. Yeah, I would actually play. That it's game. very cute. We played that multiple times. In fact, when I was carting the girls around, if we walked into the vendor area at all, we had to stop and see if it was open. And we always played a quick game on our way to wherever we were going. It was hilarious. I played like five games of this. So, you, it's it's very much a dexterity kind of game. A predictive dexterity. A predictive game. dexterity. That's a great way. <laughs> Like, what on earth is that? So you get these rings, okay, and you stack them up, and you put a bunch of gems in the middle. So you've got, like, 12 rings. And it there are a couple little strategic holes on the sides of the board, and then in the corners behind your little dragon you've got, because there's dragons in each four corners, you've got your own little compartment where you're going to be stuffing gems in there. So everybody goes around the board, and one person's the daddy dragon, and uh, he's like it, okay? Yeah. He's going to be the one that lifts a ring. Everyone goes around first. And picks what color gem they think they're going to have the most of that spills out. And then the daddy dragon's going to lift the ring. And there's some strategy there. You can kind of you can maneuver, manipulate maneuver it. You can and try to, to knock, hold certain ones on. Or just try to keep them off. all in. You yeah. can be ridiculous with it. It's kind of funny. Um, Caitlin on the last round did a oops and like splashed them all off. So they went all everywhere. It was hilarious. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with it. Um and then you pull them off, and if your colored gems don't fall down any holes, you get to pick them up and stuff them in your little, like, hidey spot. And at the end of the game, whoever's got the most gems wins. It's yep. very straightforward, but it's cute because everybody gets to fiddle with the the stack of gems. And it's fun. The, the rings remind me of the rings you see on curtain rods, you yeah, know, for, the, curtain <laughs> for like, rings. shower curtains or something, you yeah. know, or, or, yeah, just regular curtain rings. But it's just fun to clack around and play with those while you're playing and... A lot of fun. People can smack talk and cute, simple game. The kids love it. Yep. That was a big hit. And the last one, it shows Shaky Manor on here. That's, again, the Americanized one. Yeah, they call it Panic pa- Mansion. Panic I Mansion. Know, I wonder why they changed the name. That I have seems... no idea. It's an English name, Panic Mansion, and then Shaky Manor. I don't know why they changed it. But That's anyway. Strange. So, Panic Mansion, Shaky Manor. Nessa whichever, liked that one. It's a little, it's a little, you have a little... Well, both of them like kind of kind of like a little building, and it's got compartments with little doorways. It reminds me a little bit of Ice Cool, but yes. it's a tiny version of it. A tiny. There's like little rooms, but About there's the little s- doorways in between. Smaller each, than my notebook. Probably. In between each room, and you have a bunch and of objects that you sprinkle into the onto the board. Yeah. And then in the base game, you flip a card, 
and it shows a color of the room. There's eight different rooms, if I recall right. And um, you're trying to get your ten. adventure and three... Ten. Is there ten? Yeah. You get your adventure and the three treasure chests into the room of that color with no other objects in there. You start out with just those things, so it's and like a ghost, right? Yeah. So you try to maneuver your board, you're like tilting, you're doing that tilty <laughs> thing and trying to get them all into that color room without the ghost being there. If you get if you first one to do that, they say Panic Mansion and they get the car, they get the car, they get a point. First one to five points wins, but the trick is once you win, they get to pick an object like a snake or a spider or something and they throw it into your board. And, and the they, toughest ones are the little round eyeballs. And, then there's little eyeballs it's a ball. And, and so you basically it makes <laughs> it more cute. difficult. Now you have an extra object that you're trying to yeah. do. And if you keep winning, you're going to end up with a whole pile of junk that you're trying to maneuver and get to the right room. And that's the base game. And then there's an advanced version where you flip a card and it shows a list of objects you have to get in your room and what color room it is. So it's more difficult. You don't just necessarily get the same thing every time. Yeah. And then once, that you, was do, fun. once you do that, once you once you win that, then you, you, you mix it up and then you pass it to your left. And now they have to deal with what, however... You, you messed you, it up, how, right? how much you messed it up, and you just go around. First one to five wins. So it's a fun little game. The base game, I think, is a little broken because you could literally, like, let's say you had the blue room and you get your stuff in it. You could flip it over and there'd be a blue card, no, no, and you go, "I win." We had that happen. <laughs> and you flip it over happen. again, and you happen to get a blue room. I win. Yeah. We had and we happen. also noticed that if you flip over and it's the room next door, the person that won the last game can just slide a little bit and, and, and get them done. in the next room. So yeah. I think the base game's a little broken, and I think you should have had the same rule where you shake it up and move it to the next yeah, person I agree. instead of doing that. But yeah, it was a fun little game. The girls liked that one too. Um, they both played that one a lot. We we played that several times. In fact, I'm not certain I logged all of the plays. <laughs> <laughs> that, that we actually played because we played several versions of that too, so that one was a pretty big hit. But by far, their the overall favorite seems to be Dragon's Breath. So that's what the game that would get our vote in our house. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna skip through the regular game of the year award. Okay, and we're gonna go to the heavy games. Okay, the heavy games. <laughs> I'll put that in quotes. Yeah. In fact, my next board game breakfast is about. Heavy games in the spilled the spilled Oh, awards. really? Oh, interesting. So, the next one is... So, we're going to switch to the heavy games, and here they are. I didn't... Uh, uh, so, I played all these. Rebecca played none of these, as no, far as I know. No, I So, first play. we're going to do the quack... I'm not going to say the name of it. I'll english it and quack say... Quack Sal it's Salber? The, it's the Quack of Quacklenburg. Oh, Quedlinburg. Dear the heavens. The Quack of Quedlinburg. But dear anyway... Dear heavens... This game That's quacktastic. <laughs> should not have been nominated for the heavy category. It is not a heavy game. It is a family weight game. It is super light, in my opinion. It's not it's not like kid game light, but it is a family weight game. It's, wow, it's, and this is this is the Kenner. Yeah, or whatever? this is Wow. So this, the premise is you have a bag and there's a bunch of hmm. tiles in your bag, right? And so you're gonna be drawing tiles out of the bag and you're gonna be going along at this track. You're trying to get as far as you can and you eventually you, you, you're trying to pull the tiles out of your bag, but if you get a certain number of a certain type of tile, you bust. So yeah. it's a pressure luck game. Um, so you can pull, you can pull at any point. You can say, I stop. And if you stop, then you get you get some money and some things. If you go too far and bust, then you don't get as much reward as if you if you don't bust. Um, then you have money and you'll buy more tiles to put in your bag. And obviously, as you add more tiles to your bag, you're going to go further and further along this track. And some tiles give you superpowers. Like if you draw a tile, maybe... Uh, and put it on the board, maybe you'll get a bonus if you have the most of that tile. Or the tile, you put a tile on the board, and maybe if you are next to a gym when you end with that tile, you get a gym. And it, it's it, that's that's the whole game. <laughs> that's the entire game. You're pulling tiles from your bag and trying not to bust. I think I'd rather play that game where you're the archaeo... Thebes. This game was... Um, <laughs> I don't know. It had two two things against it. One is it's too light to be nominated for this, which is again this is I'm gonna do a whole board game breakfast on this because I think these this other than the one on the far is that I don't know if you're looking it'd be right the far right the the other two are too light to be in this category. So not mm. only is it light too light for the category, it is ridiculously random. It is like off the charts crazy random. Because all you're doing is pulling tiles from the bag, and you could go pull, 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 bust. And one one time I pulled, Thieves. and one time I pulled probably twenty tiles from the bag, hmm. and I just got lucky. So it's just it has it has has it's full of catch up mechanisms, and any game that's full of catch up mechanisms tells you it's it's a poorly designed game. Um, 
the, there was a person that was leading the entire game until oh, we yeah, until yeah, we yeah, drew this that. one card that gave us like a crazy massive catch up mechanism and and I think. I'm not sure if he ended up in last, but I was a distant first place, and I was not winning the game in, in the last round. That's crazy. It's just that's crazy. I I I, I was very disappointed with this game. Hmm. So that's me. Okay. So next one. What I, what about I told Tommy at the end. I said it probably would have been more enjoyable. We just all rolled a die and see who got the high number and, and moved on to the next game. So play Tenzi. Tenzi. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, so next one is clever. I think the translation is pretty clever. Like, I'm pretty clever. Oh. So this is a roll and write game. This one should not have been nominated for the heavy game category either. It does have some rules to it, but it is too light to be in the heavy category, in my opinion. Um, both, of the, both of the first two games could have easily been um, nominees for Spiel. It almost seems like they had too many Spiel, like... Spiel level games, the regular level games, so they threw some into the heavy category just so they can get more things nominated. So uh, weird. Yeah, because I'm going to say... So Pretty Clever is a roll and write game. You basically roll some dice. Um, you pick one of those dice, and mm. you put it on your board. You take the action of that dice. And then if you pick a... The, the Kind of the mechanism is if you pick a high number, which are usually more valuable, all the dice that are lower than that are... You, or moved out of your dice pool, so you have less dice to roll for your next okay, roll. Okay. So, like, if I roll, uh, let's say I roll a bunch of dice, and I get a, uh, outside I want to use a four. Anything less than a four is removed from my pool of six dice okay. for the next roll. You run a roll three times, so it's kind of a risk. If you take a high die, you yeah. have less dice to roll for the next time, so you may even get even more a crappier roll for the next time around. True. Okay. And then once you do your three rolls, then everyone else on the on the on the around the table can take one of the actions of the discarded dice. So if you discard valuable dice you're giving them a chance to take a bigger action and then as time goes by you're going to try to complete columns and rows of numbers and things like that and it, eventually you'll get to a point where you start triggering like special powers and so you'll put a dice you'll put like put a number down in one spot it'll let you mark out a number over here which may trigger something to help you do something in another section and that's pretty much it you're trying to get the most points there's a weird multiplier like in most roll and write games you take you take add up all your scores from different sections you take your lowest number multiply it by a multiplier and blah blah blah, blah and you get three thousand points yes so, so it it's just a roll dice pick a dice take an action roll a dice pick a dice take an action that's the whole premise hmm. i'm not a big fan of roll and writes but i see that people who would like roll and write games would really like this game because gotcha. it's, it's really thinky and you got combos going and you're trying to but it's not so much thought into it that it's a heavy game is what you're saying like it's a i mean you could really think about it, like okay if i take a five blue five i get this and okay if i do that so if you I... ap it yeah it's a heavy game <laughs> But the rule. But if it's, uh, I mean, we we're taught the game in like three minutes. Okay, then that's probably not a heavy game. I don't know. So interesting. Yeah. And last but not least, a real game that really belongs in this category that I will be so disappointed if it doesn't win because it's the only decently heavy game out of the three is Heaven and Ale. <laughs> Heaven and Ale is is a somewhat heavy, thinky, puzzly Euro game. Okay. Um, I, it was not my kind of game because it was too puzzly. It's very much tile placement and you're trying to place tiles in such a way that it triggers combos and you got to really think, okay, if I put put this here, do I need this and this and this? It's really, it's really puzzly. It's a very puzzly Euro. It reminds me a lot of like suburbia and subdivision Ooh. and the fact that you're placing tiles in certain places and they'll combo off each other and, and things like that. So you're saying I might like this? I think you would like this one. I, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't. It's just not my kind of game. I gotcha. Don't, I'm not the. I don't like. Sounds like my kind. I, of game. I like thinking out strategy and long term strategy. But I don't like thinking. Okay, if I put the tiles here, then it's gonna do this, and I need to build it in such like a way, this. and it adds up to these points. And if I put this tile over here, it's just. It's 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 really, combo y thinky. Perfect. Type of game. Sold. So it was good. Win. I, I enjoyed it. It, 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 it definitely fits this category. It definitely, I think, deserves to be nominated because it's heavy, but not so heavy that it's just... Only um, heavy gamers would enjoy it kind of correct, thing. Correct, correct. Yeah. It's not like heavy, but it's a heavier game. So I think cool. it's... Cool. I think it's... Um, I think it's a good game. Ew. I mean, again, it, I, can, I can see why people would really, really, really like this game, but it's not my kind of game. Cool. Sold. So it gets my vote. Sold. I want to play it now. Play all the games. 
All, All right. right. So let's go to the big one. Let's go to the, the spiel uh, of the spiel. The official Game of the Year nominees. Oops, that's not it. That's hilarious. Where did it go? He, did he popped it? up Survive, and I'm like, yes. Where did it go? Survival of Uh-oh. the fittest. Where did I put it? Did I not put it? Maybe I skipped one. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. The IT guy is so fired. Where is it? Did you put it under mine? Oh, IT. Uh, uh SpaghettiOs. What the heck? IT is so fired. All right, is just, it under 10? No, I'll just you're, add you're, it. Here, I'll add, I'll add it real quick. What? Give, give me Lame. three seconds. Three seconds. Lame. Three seconds. I can't wait anymore. I can't stand it. <laughs> I want everything now. All right, here we go. Can I just... St- okay. I'll start, though, because you all know... No, nope, that's the last. Azul? Oh, you can start with Azul. Hey, how, how do you... It just popped over there. That's funny. <laughs> All right, dork. All, All right, right so. this is the Game of the Year Awards. Azul. Pretty, 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 pretty game. I know a lot of you have played that, too. It's beautiful, abstract game where you're laying out glass tiles, making a, a mosaic or nice floor, however you want to look at that. And it is... I, I love the mechanisms for this game because you're picking up tiles in a, um, from this like certain pool area. The one you pick, you keep, and you lay on a special, um, like, side p- of, to your player mat where you're going to eventually move it over to your floor. Um, but the pieces that you don't use, you kind of put into a middle pool that everyone's going to have to pull from at the end. So there's strategy for if later on you know you're going to want, like, six of the blue ones, you may not pick it right away, so you know, there's a bunch in the pool and you just take it all at once at the end. Um, things like that. And I really like that. I like the way the scoring works for this. It's beautiful on the table. It appeals to everyone. It's abstract, so you can get a lot of people to play it that may not necessarily play a lot of board games. I don't know. I just... Um, kids, adults can play this with varying ability, you know, of course. And that, I think, is one of the appeals, too, because you can take this game super seriously and play with some heavy, abstract, hardcore gamers, or you can just let the kids play it and have a good time with it, too. It's one of those you can put into it as much as you want. I think it balances well. It's purdy. Oh, I, I, I'm, I like this one okay. Again, not my type of game. And um, I like it. I was informed by a person that I, I suck at it because I score less than 100 points. <laughs> That's funny. wasn't me for and once. I, I'm like, I'm okay with sucking at it as well. Wow. So, so yeah, that's funny. This one, uh, this one deserves to be nominated. It deserves to maybe win, maybe. No, it'll, yeah, if it does, if it doesn't win, something's wrong with the world because this, this is this is a game that will be around in 20, 30 years that I people agree. will keep playing. This one is another. One this of one those will be timeless, forever. Classics. It will be forever, and we just froze. Are you serious? <gasps> no. What is up? With- Not back yet. Now we're back. Haha, psych! We're All back! Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get. So, what I think happened was the makers of Azul hacked our system so we wouldn't talk about the other two games. Totally. <laughs> That's what Sneaky happened. Sneaky devils, they're everywhere. So, to recap, for any of you missed it, she really loves Azul. She thinks it's amazing. I like Azul. It's not my kind of game, but I still like it. It's going to win. It says a lot. This will game will be around. We'll be talking about this Forever. game. Forever. 10, 20 years from now, we'll still be talking about Forever. this game. Forever. So, for those of you that love, love, love Exul, they're coming out with a deluxe giant version of the game that's pre-order only, I guess, from the makers. Who's the makers? Is it Plan? Who makes Exul? I don't know. Who makes Exul? I don't know. Exul's like over there I see somewhere. a B. I don't think, is it Plan B? Who makes Exul? I don't know. Ask our, our studio audience. Yeah, it is Plan B. I was right. So oh, Plan B games. You can, you can pre-order it from Plan B games. Uh, deluxe giant version. It comes in like can a little carry Can you place. tile your floor with it? I don't know, but the, the tiles are like big. <laughs> I want to be able to tile my floor. But you get it at a low, low price of $300. Oh, what the? <laughs> I better be able to tile my floor. I was waiting for you to say that. Low, low price. A low, low price. I'm tiling my floor with it. I guess it would be like... Can we have Legacy Azul? <laughs> Dude. Shatter it. When you drop the tile on the floor, you, you shatter it. That would be awesome. But then you have this really cool kitchen floor when you're done. 
<laughs> Dude, someone get on that. For 300 bucks, what's stepping up to a grand and you have a floor? Yes. I'm on board. Let's do this. All right. All right. Luxor. So move on to Luxor. Luxor, I thought I was going to hate this game. I, I, I just... This was a family hit. Yeah, I thought I was... I, so when I sat down to play this game, I started reading the rules... As soon as I opened up the rule book, a Queen Games person just got teleported next to me. <laughs> said, can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> Greatness. Taught us the game. Uh, did a really good job teaching the game. Uh, I really surprisingly enjoyed this game. I immediately went to Rebecca and said, you got to try this game. And so later on, me, Rebecca, and then the girls played it. And the girls loved it, too. And it's just, yeah. a, it's just a really fun little family game. Yeah, both uh, the girls loved it. And I, I enjoyed playing it. Surprisingly, I wasn't sure I was going to like it at first because I'm like, oh, yay. You know, I thought, oh, this has been done before or whatever. No. It's it, a super simple premise. You basically play a yeah. card and the card, you move you move some people. But there's much more. I mean, there's some cool things going on. They got a cool little mechanism where you have five cards and you put them in a row. And you basically can play from each end, kind of similar to Bonanza, but but from each end. Yeah. When you play a card, then you split the cards and you put your new card in the middle. Middle, so you're funneling your cards out, so you can see and plan ahead a little bit. I, I don't know. I really yeah. Because if you need to like, it. if you need to move your piece like six spaces, you go okay. Well, I need to play this one and then this, this one, one and this one. You, yeah. It's... Yeah. You can really kind of plan ahead on what you're going to do, and it was just a fun little race game. Basically, it's a racing. There's more to it than that, but it's a racing game. You're trying to race to the, through the tomb and get to the end. But you can collect treasures along your way, and you score points, set collection, and things like that. But it's just a super light game. And Nessa grabbed it and was playing it and didn't have any issues. Her Katie, biggest Katie issue was it. manipulating the cards to get the card in the middle. That was the hardest part for her. <laughs> hey. But, yeah, it, it, it yeah. it's a good game. I think it deserves to be nominated. We immediately went out and ordered the deluxe version off the Kickstarter. Um, Woo! The girls are going to be like, stoked the about that. Unfortunately, the Kickstarter's gone. It ended yesterday, but... Um, well, you tried to to warn everybody. I think you posted or something I on did, Twitter. You're like, I did post on Twitter. Kickstarter's ending soon. <laughs> yeah. But so. no, it was... We really enjoyed it. It's a great... It, it, it's it, it gives me the same vibe as Emotep. It's just a real light family game. Yeah. It's easy to teach, easy to learn, easy to play. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's pretty fun. Pretty fun. I even was able to teach that one after a play, so... That tells you how easy it is to teach, because you guys people are asking, not, know, not a huge fan of teaching games. So uh, People are asking about Dragon Castle. We didn't get a chance to play it. I want to play that, because I've heard nothing but good things about it. And some of our friends have played it and really enjoyed it, too. So I must say that the buzz has been very positive, and I am definitely intrigued and want to play that one. All right, I'll, the floor is yours for the last one. Did you install my soapbox? <laughs> oh, good lord. What is this game? Why is it on a spiel list, let alone as... It should be Firestarter. This game. You're... You can get a deck of cards and play this stupid game. Okay? You're like, hey, Hunter has a five. I have a seven. Who's gonna play their card first? And no one can say anything, do anything. I can't kick him under the table. Nothing. And you just stare at each other. And then someone puts down a card. It's like a game of war, but less exciting. Because you're like, oh, look. You played the seven. I have a five. We lose. Big flipping deal. I cannot believe this is a stinking game. What I can't believe is, Good. is some people think this is the best game ever. They love it. I'm going to introduce them to war because, man, you can get fierce because if you lay down two of the same card in war, it's on. It's a battle. Yeah, I... I this game doesn't even have that. Let's let's just say this. It sucks. I didn't enjoy it. Nope. I can maybe see how some major, like, crazy casual gamers would like this game. Like, okay. Like, ridiculously casual. Again, war is better. I'm saying... I don't know if war is better. War is better. But I will say this: at the con, there was a there was three tables, two table. I want to say two or three tables for every game. Uh, at least uh, yeah. two games. I think there was two tables for each game, so there was eighteen tables. I think I think that's right. The mine was empty ninety five percent of the convention. Every other table was almost oh, yeah. always full. They were packed the entire convention. Except Even... for the kids' game. Kids' games were hit and miss, but well, yeah. all the other tables were full packed the entire always. convention. That's in fact, the it, it, towards the end of the convention, 
This was Sunday morning. Someone took one of the mine tables and started playing their own game on that table because <laughs> it was never occupied. Oh my god. Well, I just find it hilarious that Tommy wouldn't even play with you. <laughs> but it's it, like but you know again, if you're super casual, not Dude. I would almost say non-gamer, you might like this game. War is better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At least you can tie in war and you guys can fight it out. But this game is just all or nothing and everyone loses. But I mean, you, you, Yay, we made it you, you just look at your card and go, okay, I got a medium card. And you just stare at each other. Until the tension builds enough that someone goes, I give up. I hope mine's next. And then you lose. <laughs> I, I just, it's not my kind of game. It just, it's just, I know there, no, I know as you, if, if you get through the first few levels, which almost at random if you get through the first few levels, you get some powers to like, you can you can mess up once, or you can throw a throwing star and like look, take everyone's lowest card away. But we never even made it. we made it. We got what one throwing star once. Yeah. But we died but before we, we, we used it. <laughs> played more games. We didn't care enough. I think is part of the problem too. I don't know. I I suppose I I could see this as a game or whatever, but I, just as a spiel game, this just I, well, I kind I mean, of feel like it's an insult to games to have this as a spiel game to me i think of spiel games as having some meat of some kind to them i don't know i just i don't see this game having any meat to it at all it has it's not yeah but I, it's more I, of an activity it's more so, like war someone it's, someone must love it because there's people what you saw you saw someone on twitter that someone's played it 200 times oh yes yeah, someone said that that's true i i, I really wanted to find that person and <laughs> And introduce them to some other games. Yeah, see, the people on the site, there's, there's like, our family would love it. It's awesome. It's for non-gamers. And Oh my gosh, okay. It's just not for us, I guess. But there you go. People out there that say we never have negative reviews. Boom. <laughs> there you go. So to sum up, Dragon's Breath, Azul, Heaven and Ale. And Luxor. Luxor... I don't think it'd win, but any other. Oh, oh, you're picking winners. Yeah, okay. Any other year, if it, if oh, Azul if wasn't Azul in... wasn't there, a Luxor would probably yeah. Although uh, I, yeah. I would vote Luxor over Azul personally, but that's me. But I don't think it'll win. I think Azul should win hands down. It's amazing. So that is it. That's what gets me. Oh my gosh, I don't, I, I, don't <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it, folks. But I guess the. There's a game but, for everyone, but right? But no, that's the thing. I mean, that's the cool thing about our hobby, too, is we everyone's got their definitive tastes of what they like. Because, I mean, you and I, we wouldn't think twice about being like, yeah, we played War of the Ring 200 times, and we'd be boasting about it. There's people out there going, you people are insane. And I get it. I totally get it. Because we are. But, I mean, that's the beauty, is there's 10 billion games. Well, okay. They're coming out with, what, 5,000 games a year? Obviously, I don't know if it's they 5, have to, 000, but there's a lot. It's a ton of games a year, okay? They're coming out with thousands of games. And the nice thing is, they must be popular enough for someone because they're selling. <laughs> so. so what was your favorite of the ones you played? I know you didn't play them all. It had to be Luxor, right? Luxor would be my favorite because I played Azul before the con, so I'm not going to count that. But yeah, Luxor. Luxor is my winner out of the Spiel games. Even over that. Azul? No, I just said I played Azul before then, so it oh, doesn't count. Oh, the ones that you played. Okay. Yeah, the ones I played there. Ooh, boy. for oh, All the ones I played, I enjoyed Luxor the most. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I still oh, even over Heaven and Ale. I, like I said, I, Ooh, I can see... Heaven and Ale, yeah? I, I can see why people like that game, but it just wasn't for me. Yeah. No, I think I'd like Heaven and Ale a lot. All right, actually. somebody mentioned earlier about... Um, I think it was Kabuki Kid. She mentioned about the jury members being good teachers. Um, I got taught by... Other people or myself every game, so um, I kind of went at odd times. So I don't know if there was people jury available. Members, what? Jury members, the spiel people were teaching games. Oh, oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, we never had anybody we teach had, us. Uh, Queen Games taught me taught us Luxor, and everyone every other game I either taught myself or someone played it previously taught us how. To oh, play. okay. Yeah, I was gonna say the memoir. We had the stronghold guy, um, not Bonacore, um, one of his guys taught us the game and he was awesome and then when we played Pictomania um, 
There was CGE the... people that are there. They're awesome. I can't think of his name. The Czech, I know. I can't think the of the Czech it. game guy. Yeah, I <laughs> love that guy. Name? He's I so said, awesome. I've met him several times. Yeah, I'm horrible with names. I know, and he got a haircut, and it kind of threw me off because yeah. I didn't recognize him. He usually had long hair. <laughs> yeah, his hair's like super short now. Um, but he and the other guy is always there too. Um, those two were awesome. They were really fun. They they whooped it up, and it was fun to play the the Pictomania game and. Um, yeah, I can't think of the... I'm horrible with names. I have to hear your name like five, ten times before I get your name, so I apologize. I'm really bad. But, yeah. Um, other than that, yeah. And you guys were awesome. Um, those of you that were teaching us games and stuff, too. Um, it was great, because picked up on the games, got to try stuff. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So, anywho. Yeah, I'm trying to... Find him, but I can't think of his name. Oh, so there well. were a lot of other conventions and stuff going on this weekend, too. Did any of you go to some of the other ones that weren't at BGG? I'm curious. Because I know there was a lot of stuff going on. So did you guys play anything cool, new, and exciting? You guys been buzzing? Yeah, this was a, this was an exceptional con. I, I've, I, it's rare that I play many games. I think the fact that you were slightly under the weather and girls were exhausted, they loved out me to play more games. And I probably slept... Let's see. When was it? Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night? Those three nights combined, I maybe slept 10 hours, 12 <laughs> hours, those whole total. Real question. Have you played your new war game yet? Oh, gosh. A free war game? No. <laughs> no, we've not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Free games. <laughs> free games from the con, yes. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> There's a reason they're free. Space base. Ooh. Ah, somebody got to play TI4, Kabuki. Yay, about time you got that. Six players. We played five, right? Five? five I players. think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hey! Kiki Keeper Joe! It's Joe S! Yes! We play... <laughs> I've seen you twice now. I think it's like the con or something, and we haven't gotten to play a game yet. It will happen. <laughs> I was surprised how many people were tweeting about uh, being at the con. I didn't even see them there. And I'm like, dang it, it'd be fun to go walk up and be like, hey, I see you on Twitter all the time. Um, the girls spied uh, Chaz and Rodney Smith. And they while we were eating, I made sure to let them eat before the girls, like, descended like vultures <laughs> upon them. Because they were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I was like, calm down. It was really cute. I have a great picture of them on Twitter. If you have seen it, Caitlin's like grin is like a mile wide. I thought her face was gonna crack open. It was cute. Nessa half remembered, half forgot. It was funny. She's like, "Who are they again?" And I'm like, "Oh gosh." <laughs> I don't watch Rodney too much. It's only when in front I, of her. Yeah, when, yeah. When I uh, learn it, when I learn when I learn a game. A lot of times, what I'll yeah. do is I'll put the his uh, rule whatever. Uh, rules thing on and uh -huh. like, while I'm reading the rule book and I'll just have it playing in the background. Uh -huh. So the girl, yeah, Nessa probably doesn't see him as much, but it just Chaz, can't be we see, I mean, we don't see as much of him because he's not on the dice tower anymore. Yeah, but we watched like all the thrift sifts and some yeah, of the right. silly stuff and the girls absolutely adored those and so they were like, oh my gosh, it was really cute. Kabuki, she asked, what are the odds of Rebellion joining my collection? I would probably say zero. Really? So I don't think you would play it. Oh. And Tommy... I'll just say, Tommy, hey, let's play Rebellion. And oh, yeah, there you go. You, you have a play, it'll, buddy. It'll, it'll magically appear. Although, he, although <laughs> we were, one, one third through the game, he's like, I don't know if I want to keep this. And then by the end of the game, he's like, I think I'm going to buy the expansion. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> and the other guy. <laughs> Peter. And the other guy. <laughs> Chaz and the other guy. <laughs> That's kind of how Nessa Rodney. was. That's kind of how Nessa was. Rodney's probably like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> but, yeah. That's awesome. So, tonight is all about BGG Spring. So, um, I think, <laughs> I think we have any last minute questions. Um, let's see what's coming up for us. Ooh, uh, Pulsar 2849. That has intrigued me you're as going, well. You're going out to H Atlanta this weekend, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Caitlin is kicking some tail at the History B Nationals. I'm so excited. It's going to be crazy. I told her not to have any expectations. Just go and have fun. See how it is and if you like it. But we said that to her at the regional thing. And she qualified for Nationals. So who knows what she's going to do. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see it. And then <laughs> next month, end of next month is... 
insane. The BGG at Sea cruise, our first cruise ever. <laughs> I'm excited on so many levels. What levels are you excited about? A, I'm done with my master's class by then, and I'm not taking another master's class probably ever again for a long time, because I was insane to do that. But I'm excited. And B, we've never been on a cruise before. It's right around our 10-year, like, date of versary-ness. And, uh, uh, blah, blah, Alaska. I've wanted to go there forever. I'm going to tell Bonacore that you didn't mention him. And Steven's going to be there. <laughs> BG cruise, BG at sea, the one we're going on. I don't know if they do the same thing every year, but we're it is an Alaska Canadian cruise. So, dude, it, it leaves from Canada. Seattle. Oh. It goes to Vancouver. Sure, I don't care. It's Canada. And then it's gorgeous. It goes somewhere in Alaska. Yes. I don't know. I may not come back. Guys. We're gonna ride a train through I the mountains. I may in Alaska. just stay there. So, we have, it's gonna be fun. Maybe we'll see some whales. Maybe we'll see some. Mountains. Glaciers. Again, he's probably going to have to drag me back. I'm going to be playing board games the whole time. Baloney! <laughs> nice seeing you then. <laughs> You're never going to see me sitting down. I'm going to be all over that boat. It's going to be amazing. And then she gets back and then packs and then goes to Dice Tower Con. While I get to do work. I, I got nothing on that. <laughs> I must say this is the first time I've really felt like having the summers off has actually been of a beneficial thing. This is the first time we've actually done something with our summer. It's so crazy weird. I, I'm so beyond excited. I don't even know how to, what to think about it yet. I haven't had time to process Victoria, it. Victoria, that's where we're going. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Woo. <laughs> one of the excursions. I knew it was is to the, the gardens, but yeah. we're not, I don't think we're going to that one. We're gonna just. We're just gonna. We're gonna go cruise the gonna, scene. We're gonna. We're just gonna <laughs> check the like city cool. out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do Canadian things. Do Canadian things, eh? Hey. Right. <laughs> They're gonna be like, "Oh my God, tourists, get out of here!" Okay. <laughs> I guess you don't do that anymore. It's like everybody's boop, 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 no, everybody's boop, like boop. this, doing selfies. Oh, seriously, stop! Goodness, it's gonna be amazing. People, people, hope to see y'all around. What's up? All right, well, let's ooh. wrap it up. We've been on for an hour, over an hour. It's fun. We chattered and chatted and. You guys were fun. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I am so excited. The more of you, you guys that we meet, the more... I don't know, it just amazes me. We, you guys are just the most amazing group of people. That, well, that's I cannot what, express. It's really what keeps us going, honestly. It really does. You guys are just absolutely amazing. It has been so much fun getting to meet you guys and chat with you guys and spend time with you guys, play games with you guys. It's been an amazing experience and I cannot thank you enough because it has just been memory maker weekend, big time. So, are we doing stuff Thursday? We gotta do something Thursday. I'll probably work it Thursday. So. Oh, wait. We can't do stuff Thursday. <laughs> when do you leave? <laughs> Thursday morning, like really, really early. So, so. we'll see you next Tuesday <laughs> with an Atlanta wrap up. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that is. Maybe, I know what we can do. I have a bunch of pictures I haven't put on Twitter I can give you, and you can do a photo montage. <laughs> Homework for Hunter. <laughs> I'm gonna be working late, so I'm gonna be doing every night this week. That's no fun. Boo. Okay, well, we'll figure something out. We will talk to you guys soon. Thanks again for joining us. Love you guys. Have an awesome, awesome day. See you later.